गुरवे गौरचंद्रा राधिका तदाल कृष्णा कृष्ण पुत्रे तन्मयतया भक्ति प्रज्ञान के सौरस्वामी महाराज and same in the north street of my shiksha guru shishmat bhakti vedant swami today we have done bas puja this bas puja in coming from ancient days where we ancient days. एक्चुअली दिस पूजा इज अ व्यास डे सप्तावे अवतार ऑफ कृष्ण वॉन्टेड टू ग्लोरीफाई कृष्ण वॉन्टेड टू एस्टैब्लिश दैट वेदा जार वेदा जार शोइंग ऑल दैट कृष्ण इज सुप्रीम He was not satisfied by that. He made Vyas Brahma Sutra, essence of all the Upanishads, Veda. He divided Vedas for. He made so many Puranas, <coughs> Mahabharat even for low class of persons, even for ladies also. and even he was not satisfied that vyas came and his guru nar came and he instructed him to glorify krishna and his boyhood his childhood past times and especially oh beautiful sweet past times of his young age with gopis and then he in his trance he saw all these things and he manifested it for all general people who were ignorant so all the basic literature means only to krishna supreme lord and krishna so he is called vyas especially <coughs> in shrimad bhagavatam who is krishna nanda nanda bevat vividly he has established there he is sanction supports and how to had praise prem in the guidance of gopis which was cleared by our goswami especially rupa goswami all these things so he is there anyone 
glorifying Krishna here and there on the seat of Vyas, they are also Vyas. So, Sukadeva Goswami is also Vyas. His disciples in his life all are Vyas. So, today we have done it. I want to discuss about Guru Tattva. There are so many qualified persons. I am requesting first Gopinda Prabhu to speak two words on Guru Tattva first. So, as others have been instructed to speak, somehow or other I've gotten the same instruction. The subject is Guru Tattva. Guru Tattva takes a primary position in the pantheon of Krishna conscious teachings. So much a primary position that Rupa Goswami, in describing the 64 Angas of Bhakti, he began with this particular concept, Guru Padashraya Tasmat, Krishna Dikshadi Shikshanam, Vishrambena Goro Seva Sadhu Manu Vartanam. These first four of his teachings, all, four out of 64, all center on Guru. And even the fifth, Saddharma Prichchati, also. The first of them means Guru Parashraya Tasma, that the first of all instructions is that one must find a bona fide spiritual master and surrender totally at his feet. The second of them, Krishna Dikshadi Shikshanam, that there's an absolute need to take Diksha mantras from that Guru and Siksha as well, teachings in the finer practices of Krishna consciousness. And uh, Guru Vishrambena Guru Seva, that means that when one finds that Guru and takes initiation and takes Siksha from him, he should serve him with like inspired intimacy. And Sadhu Bhart Manu Bhartanam, that one should, when one tries to understand what path to follow in my Krishna consciousness, the answer is one, that I should follow the path that the sadhus have previously chalked out and set in front of us. Um, our Srila Prabhupada had a very strong sense of this, and it reminds me, you asked me to speak on Guru Tattva. In, uh, actually, in the second chapter of Bhagavad Gita, there's a shloka, Vyavasayatmika buddhiri keya kurunandana, Everyone, some people know. In any case, it means that with one-pointed intelligence, one-pointed focus, you can follow the path of Krishna consciousness. But in his purport to this, Prabhupada mentions that his inspiration for Krishna consciousness came from this concept, especially as Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur has said, Yasya Prashada, Bhagavat Prashada, Yasya Prashada, Nagati Kutopi, Dhyayam Stuvang, Yasya, Yasya Stri Shandyam, Bande Guru Shi Charanaravindo. So he mentions this verse, which means that without the mercy of the spiritual master, an individual can make no advancement in Krishna consciousness. 
and by the mercy of the spiritual master only one gets God, one gets Krishna consciousness itself. And therefore I should offer my Dandavat Pranams regularly to my Gurudev and I worship his lotus feet. So these things were inspiring our Srila Prabhupada and um, he, like Srila Prabhupada I've seen Srila Gurudev so dedicated to the very principle and the idea that everything rests on the principle of Guru Tattva. According to dedication to Guru, revelation of uh, Radha Krishna Nityalila, Mahaprabhu's teachings, everything will come. Like Sakshat Dhari. Sakshat means like there's a window, something perfectly transparent. And when you look at that clean window, you don't see that. You only see what's on the other side. You don't see any obstruction. So to actually see Guru and serve Guru sincerely means automatically, non-differently, to serve uh, Radha Krishna, Kanjubu, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, and all their instructions. So it's like the secret of Guru Varga. How can, by serving Guru, one automatically gets the service of Radha Krishna themselves? So you can understand by the example. When there's something perfectly transparent, you see that thing. This is the, the word saksha, means it's the same as. And Srila Jiva Goswami res, um, gives a commentary that it doesn't mean he's the same non-different entity from Krishna. But it means he is so clear and transparent that by seeing him, automatically, Krishna is seen. So, Guru Tattva is an inconceivable Tattva. Achintya. How by seeing Guru can I see God? But yasya prasada, bhagavat prasada, yasya prasada, nagati kutu. Automatically, the mystery of our Guru Parampara is by that uh, Vishrambena Guru Seva, by that intimate service to Guru, one will find himself in intimate service to the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Thank you. Om Ajnanam Timirandasya Gyanam Jana Salakaya Chaksurun Nalitam Yena Tazma Sri Guru Vena Srila Gurudev has ordered me to speak a few words about Sri Guru Tattva. So we've heard the verses explaining Guru Tattva from Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita. As Srila Gurudev quoted this morning, Acharya Mam Vigyanayam. Sri Krishna himself says that one should see the Acharya or the Guru as my very self. One should not envy him as one would envy an ordinary human being. And one should understand that he himself is the sum total of all demigods or he's the abode of all, all demigods. We read in the first chapter of Chaitanya Charitamrita, Shiksha Guru K. Tojani, Krishna Rasvarup. The Shiksha Guru is non different from Krishna's nature or personality. Krishna himself appears in the form of Antarjami or the super soul in the heart, and also as Shresta Bhakta, the topmost devotee, in order to deliver the aspiring devotees. So Krishna appears as Paramatma and as the best devotee. When Srila Gurudev was having his festival in Florida a few years ago in Alachua, I asked him at the end of the class, Paramatma knows everything. And it's also stated that Sri Guru knows everything. They're both omniscient. So what's the difference between the two? I expected him to say, 
that Guru knows just a little bit less than Paramatma because Paramatma is, after all, God himself. So instead, Gurudev said, Guru knows much more than Paramatma. Paramatma cannot enter into Goloka Vrindavan. And even that Sri Krishna who is in Goloka Vrindavan, he does not know as much as Guru. Krishna is so busy playing with the cows, coward boys and gopis that he doesn't have time to um, think of all the sufferings of all the conditioned souls in the material world. But his condensed mercy thinks of them. And when his condensed mercy takes a shape, that shape is Sri Guru. So we've heard these verses. Also, Guru Rupa Krishna Hana, Shastra Pramane. The Diksha Guru is non different from the form of Krishna. The Krishna takes the form of the Guru in order to deliver the devotee. So we've heard all these verses and we may think, yes, Guru knows Krishna, but he doesn't know everything about this material world. I can cheat him in my activities. There's one incident that took place. Gurudev was chastising a disciple. I know you beat my wife, your wife. I've given my daughter to you. You don't realize what wealth you've gotten. I know you beat her. Oh no, Gurudev, I promise I have not beaten her. I was there, I saw. And then he had to admit. So Sri Guru is everywhere that he wants to be. He knows the pulse of the disciple and he is in the heart of his disciple and nobody can hide anything from him. He said in France in 1997 in one lecture, you may think that you can hide something. If you go and see the Guru and he says, oh, how are you? I'm fine. No problem, no problem. You're, we're hiding the fact that I have a girlfriend or a boyfriend, thinking that if I tell my guru, then he'll ruin all my plans. So Srila Gurudev explained that if we think like that, then there's, it's like it begins as a, hole, as a hole in a needle. But then that hole becomes so big that an elephant can fit through that hole and the result is an atom bomb. Our entire bhakti is destroyed. Srila Gurudev explained in Australia, Australia is just exactly on the opposite side of the Pacific Ocean. So just as breezes and waves come in from the ocean from one continent to another, so I'd like to share with you some very beautiful waves and moods of Srila Gurudev on his own Vyasa Puja Day for two years in Mawilambar as he explained the principle. He said, who can bluff Guru? Because what is the identity of Sri Guru? Someone who himself can bluff Krishna, how can he be bluffed? He surprisingly quoted the verse from Guru Vastakam, Nikunja Jorno Retikeli Sidhoi. In his Siddha Deya form, as he said this morning, no male can enter into those pastimes of Sri Shirada and Krishna. So in another form, he has that form of maidservant of Srimati Radhika. And he's so powerful that he can bluff even Sri Krishna himself. He comes out into the forest, or she comes out into the forest, and Krishna is there waiting for Srimati Radhika. And that maidservant of Srimati Radhika says, I'm sorry, Radhika couldn't come out. Krishna is burning in anxiety and separation. But she says, Radhika could not come out today. Her mother-in-law wouldn't allow it. Now Krishna is just about to faint. And then Radhika comes out, having been hidden in a nearby kunj, and Krishna comes back to life. So someone who can bluff Krishna, cheat Krishna. That is, Krishna is looking and the maidservant, my point, Radhika went in that direction. So Krishna, very much in anxiety, runs, and then Radhika is not there. And he comes back so forlorn. So one who can cheat Krishna, or cheat Srimati Radhika's mother, mother-in-law, sister-in-law, as we saw in yesterday night's play, for the service of Radha and Krishna, so they may meet. Such a powerful guru, 
who can bluff even Radhika's in-laws, how can anyone bluff such a personality? Then Srila Gurudev said, who is Guru? Actually, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is Guru. As Srila Raghunath Das Goswami prays in his Manashiksha, Sachi Sunam Nandisvara Puti Sutatve Guru Varam. O oh mind, you should see, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is non different from the son of Nanda and as the supreme and original Guru. He is Krishna in the form of Sri Radhika as the greatest Guru. Srila Gurudev gave the example of one very great scholar named Bala Babat. And he challenged Mahaprabhu and he said that I know from Vedic culture that the wife is not supposed to utter the name of her husband. So Krishna is the supreme husband and you go to your Vaishnavas are chanting his name directly. So Mahaprabhu very quickly answered since he's the omniscient, all-knowing, all-pervading Lord, he immediately answered, the wife's first duty is to follow the instructions of the husband, and the husband's order is, chant my name always. And then Balababhat said, well, I want you to hear from me all my various significant meanings of the holy name of Krishna. So Mahaprabhu immediately said, as the omniscient Lord, I know only two meanings, Jashoda Nandan and Shamasundar. He's the color of a black tamal tree, and he's the son of Mother Yasoda. I have no capacity to know any other meaning. So at every point, Balababhat was defeated. So just as no one can defeat Mahaprabhu, no one can defeat that person who is the embodiment of Mahaprabhu. That is, who has Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in his heart, who can fool him, who can bluff him. Srila Gurudev explained in another Vyas Puja lecture when he was describing Nukunja Jorno that Sri Guru who is in the line of Srila Rupa Goswami is the real and perfect Guru. The Supreme Guru is Sachi Sunam Nandisra Pati Sutatve Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu but he is none other than Krishna in the mood of Radha. And who is the Guru, the Supreme Guru of Krishna, that's Srimati Radhika herself and that's explained in Chaitanya Charitamrita. Just one last thing. So, who is the servant of the Guru of Krishna? He is the perfect Guru. He is the complete Guru. All other pure devotees who have control over their senses, who follow the uh, first verse of Upadesh Amrit, like Srila Haridas Thakur, like Prahlad, they are partial Guru. Full Guru is the servant of the Supreme Guru of Krishna. Those who are falling down, they're not even devotees, what to speak of gurus. But other pure devotees are partial Guru, and we're so fortunate that we have before us today the perfect and full Guru, the servant of Srimati Radhika. He's so he's not only the embodiment of Nityananda Prabhu, or Mahaprabhu, or Vyasdev, Full Vyastev is in his heart, but he's also the manifestation of Srimati Radhika. And even Baladev takes the form of Ananga Manjari to serve that same Radhika who he has full association with 24 hours a day. I wanted to speak all these things, but he has taken everything now, nothing to speak. Now. Very good. And the, now, Shivan Padmanath Maharaj will speak. His, her remembrance is very... He remembers where, what, where, what I have told. <laughs> she is my dictionary. Timirandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya 
चक्षुर्मित तस्म श्रीगुरव वे नम मुखम कौति वाचा फंगु लंगाते गिरी यत्पातम वंदे श्रीगुरूनता पंचाकलतरूभ्य कृपा सिंधुभ्य पतिता पवनेभ्यो वैष्णवेभ्यो नमो नम <clears throat> On this most auspicious occasion of the divine appearance day of our beloved Guru Dev, Om Vishnu Pada Sto Tada Sata Shri Shila, Bhakti Vidanta Narayan Goswami Maharaj. I'm first of all, before I speak on the subject of Guru Tatva as ordered by Shri Guru Dev, I'm offering my Dandavat pranams. And my Shraddha Pushpanjali to my Diksha Guru Dev, Nitilila Pravishta Om Vishnu Pad Asto Tarasata Shri Shila, AC Bhakti Vedanta Swami Maharaj Prabhu Pad. And secondly, and secondly, I am offering my Dandavat pranams to my beloved Siksha Guru Devs equally to Nitilila Pravishta Om Vishnu Pad Asto Tarasata Shri Shila. Bhakti Rakshak Shri Dhar Goswami Maharaj, and especially on this auspicious day, I'm attempting to lay my heart, my body, my mind, my words at the lotus feet of my most merciful Sikh Guru Dev, Om Vishnu Pad Shri Shri La Bhakti Vedanta Narayan Goswami Maharaj, and also. My Dandavat pranams to all of my Rupanuga Guru Varga, all of the Gaudiya Guru Parampara Acharyas, and to all of the Vaishnavas, Vaishnavis, who have come to this very auspicious assembly, and especially to so many of my very worshipable God brothers and God sisters, many of whom are uh, su most superior to me and senior to me. What we heard from Shrimati Shamarani Didi, as Srila Gurudev told, it is practically speaking telling everything. And the topmost understanding of Guru Tattva. What is the truth of Guru in the highest sense? But we can also analyze the position of Guru from the beginning platform. That is that every one of the living entities, jiva souls, uh, who are here within this material world, embodied in various bodies and so many millions of species of life, they are all actually the eternal parts and parcels of the Supreme Absolute Personality of Godhead, Bhagavan Sri Krishna. But they have all in this material world forgotten their relationship with Krishna. And forgetting this relationship, they have now become uh, captured by the Maya potency, the illusory energy of the Supreme Lord. And they have been awarded this temporary physical gross body made of five elements and also a subtle body made of mind, intelligence, and ego. And now, the living beings have been mounted on the wheel of time, and they are rotating body after body after body for millions of lifetimes, and uh, this is going on according to their karma. They're executing so many activities, and they're reaping the fruits of their good and bad actions in the form of so much sufferings and also some temporary enjoyments. But everyone in the material world uh, has forgotten their relationship with God and therefore they're suffering. And there is no way to remember this relationship with the Supreme Lord 
without the help of God Himself uh, coming to the aid, coming to the rescue of the Jiva soul and helping him to again revive his eternal relationship. So how does the Supreme Lord do this? He does this in two forms. First of all, within this material world, every soul who is embodied, huh, the Supreme Lord comes himself personally. He manifests his form huh, in the form of Antaryami. Antaryami means the guru who is within the heart. In other words, God himself is traveling with the jiva soul within this body. Huh? So, just in the Vedas it is described as two birds are sitting together on the branch of a tree. One bird is very preoccupied with trying to eat the fruits on the tree and he is not even noticing that sitting just next to him on the same branch is his very dear most friend. Huh? But that friend, that other bird, oh, he is very self-satisfied, Atmaram. And he is only watching. He is observing the other bird who is looking here and there how he can enjoy the fruits of the tree. And he is waiting. When will my friend turn in my direction and when will he notice that I am sitting next to him so that now a relationship can begin? So this example is there, that every living being has the presence of the Supreme Lord within their heart, but they cannot recognize that. They are unable to perceive His presence, although He is there and He is also giving uh, guidance to the Jiva soul, inspiring so many thoughts. Uh, in the Bhagavad Gita, Sri Krishna Himself is telling, Sarvasya chaham hridi sanni vishto Matak smritir jnanam apohanam cha. I am situated within everyone's heart, and from me is coming remembrance, knowledge, and also forgetfulness. So, it is the uh, destiny of every jiva soul to ultimately discover their relationship with the Supreme Lord, who is situated even within their own heart. But this cannot be done by the power of the jiva soul who is conditioned in this material world. And therefore, to give his causeless mercy to that jiva soul, the Supreme Lord himself appears externally uh, very before the very vision of that conditioned soul in the form of Sri Guru. And that form is the very embodiment of the mercy of Krishna. That form is the means through which Krishna actually gives his mercy to the jiva soul and delivers him from this material world. So, uh, in the 11th canto of the Srimad Bhagavatam, Sri Uddhava, very great devotee of Krishna, uh, topmost devotee of Krishna, he expressed to Krishna at the end of hearing all of his divine instructions. Naivo payantya pachitam kavayasta vesha brahmayushapi kritam riddam mudaksmaranta yontar bahista nubritam ashupam vidunvan acharya chaitya vapusha swagatim vyanakti. He tells to Krishna, O oh my dear Lord Krishna, even the greatest persons who are the most learned scholars, kavis, within this material universe, even if they had the entire duration of life of Lord Brahma, which spans over billions upon billions of years, and for this entire length of time, oh, they would try to express their gratitude to you. Huh? They would not be able to completely express this because you yourself appear in these two forms, antar and bahi. Antar, you appear within the heart of the jiva soul in order to deliver him. 
and bahi oh you appear as the shri guru and you give all the necessary instructions by which that soul may be able to realize his relationship and approach your lotus feet and come to you so uh, uddhava becomes overwhelmed in joy by expressing in this way to krishna because he understood that the jiva soul is helpless within this world unless krishna comes in this form of his condensed mercy in the form of the shri guru dev to give this help to the conditioned soul the conditioned soul would be bound to remain here within this material world for millions upon millions of lifetimes so how is it possible to express this gratitude therefore the vedas are telling us that if someone wants to discover if he is searching for his eternal relationship with the supreme lord and he wants to uh, learn this absolute truth then tasmad guru prapadyeta jikyasu shreya uttamam shabde parecha nishnatam brahmani upasham mashrayam if one wants to know this absolute truth tasmad guru prapadyeta jikyasu shreya uttamam they want to know what is their topmost shreya their eternal benefit of their soul uh, then they will have to prapadyeta they will have to surrender to the lotus feet of the representative of god in this world who is actually sakshad haritvena non different manifestation of the supreme lord to rescue the conditioned souls but he must also be able to determine who is that guru by what qualities and qualifications that i can recognize him so therefore it is stated in the vedas his qualities his nature and character are described shabde parecha nishnatam brahmani upashamashrayam this means shabde parecha nishnatam he has realized the absolute knowledge of the vedas as gurudev was telling krishna himself has appeared as vyas and he himself has given all the vedic literatures to enlighten the conditioned souls to give this eternal knowledge to them so therefore when uh, shri guru uh, appears within this world he also manifests this divine knowledge of the vedas who and he himself is coming in disciplic succession in guru parampara he has heard this knowledge from his guru and in a whole, long chain of gurus by which this knowledge is descending shakti pare and he has become fully conversant with it and nishnatam brahmani he has become fully acquainted with the absolute truth the absolute goal uh, of all knowledge which is to realize the supreme truth bhagavan sri krishna he has direct realization of that truth and thusly he is completely brahmani upashamashrayam he is detached from all the temporary things of this world he is not a person of this world who is looking here and there for the temporary enjoyments he is completely detached and his only business here is to manifest pure bhakti within the hearts of the living entities pure love and devotion for krishna therefore he comes in this form of the pure devotee who himself is the acharya he is acting he is demonstrating to all the living entities how they can serve krishna how they can perform pure bhakti within this world and therefore in the vedas it is telling us that those who serve and surrender to this shri guru dev yasya deve para bhaktir yata deve tata guru tasyaite katita hyarta prakashante mahatmanah any one who accepts shri guru dev as a non different manifestation of the supreme lord and he has equal devotion para bhakti to shri guru and the supreme lord himself both of them simultaneously then to that person tasyaite katita hyarta prakashante all the eternal truths of the vedas will be revealed within the heart of that very very fortunate soul so as we heard this morning shri lagurudev was telling us of his own uh, surrender at the lotus feet of his guru maharaj 
how he gave his whole body, mind, words, all of his desires, all of his attachments, he placed them at the lotus feet of his Guru Dev. And he is teaching us that this is the only way by which we may actually attain this great gift that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has come to give and that he is personally delivering to all of us. So on this holy, divine, auspicious appearance day of our beloved Guru Dev, I'm praying at his lotus feet huh? and praying on behalf of all the devotees present here and throughout the world that we may lay our heads at his lotus feet fully and fully surrender, completely surrender to his uh, manobishtam, his inner heart's desire, try to fulfill his inner heart's desire, which is to become qualified to receive this braja prem that he is coming to give on behalf of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And I am praying that all of the anartas which are inhibiting us, all of the false ego, that he will take these away and he will accept our devotion at his lotus feet. Thank you. Oh, Bhaktivedanta Asham Maharaj. Good. Om Gyana Timirandasya. Gyananjana Shalakaya Chakshu Vitam Parasman Shri Guru So today, on the most auspicious day of the appearance of our Shri Guru Dev, first I'd like to offer my most respectful obeisances unto the lotus feet of my Diksha Guru. Nityandila Pavishnu Vishnu Parasta Tarasata Shishma Chila Gorga Vinagoswamaraj. Also, my most respectful obeisances onto the lotus feet of my Paramguru days. Nityandila Pavishnu Vishnu Parasta Tarasata Shishma Chila A.C. Bhakti Vedanta Swami Chila Prabhupada. And Nityandila Pavishnu Vishnu Parasta Tarasata Shishma Chila Bhakti Pagyan Keshav Goswamaraj. And especially today, as Sri Pad, Padmanabh Maharaj has said, I'd like to offer not only not my obeisances, but my body, my mind, my heart. I'd like to make an attempt to offer this unto the Lotus Feet of Srila Gurudev, Srila Bhakti Vedanta Narayan Goswami Maharaj. So Srila Gurudev, he has explained that one who is actually qualified who is carrying that knowledge of Srila Vyasadeva, who is sitting on Vyasasana, that he is also Vyas. And he's explained that he is expand that Srila Vyasadeva has expanded that knowledge, the original knowledge of the Vedas, Vista Karan. Another meaning of the word Vyas, as I've heard from Srila Gurudev, is that it means diameter. That in a circle, you have a line coming from one end to the other end, touching the middle. Then that diameter, this is Vyas. That the meaning of this is that such representative of the Lord, who is also Vyas, that He is always keeping the divine couple, Sri Shiva and Krishna in the center, and he is coming from that transcendental abode and coming into this material world and traveling throughout the world and explaining the glories of the transcendental world and also what is this material world. He's explaining all tattva, maya tattva, jiva tattva, bhakti tattva. Uh, also, he's realized in bhakti tattva and prem tattva that such person he is really qualified to sit on the seat of Vyas. That he's traveling in this world out of mercy. It has already been explained that 
Krishna is an ocean of mercy, Karuna Sindhu. But seeing the suffering of the living entities of this material world, when that ocean, it manifests a form in this material world, then that mercy of Krishna manifests in the form of Sri Guru. Guru, Guru Krishna Rupahana Shastri Raparman, Guru Rupe Krishna Kripa Korin Bhaktagan. That, what is the position of Guru? Guru Krishna Rupahana. That Guru, that he is non different, that he is the form, the manifestation of Krishna in this world. Guru Rupe Krishna Kripa. That when Krishna, he is manifesting his mercy in this world, then it manifests in the form of Sri Guru. And he's coming. And very, very mercifully, he is distributing um, profusely this mercy coming from the spiritual world. That it has been said that Srila Gurudev, that he is um, there serving Sri Sri Radha and Krishna in the transcendental world, in Goloka Vrindavan. I, I have no realization of this. But what small experience I have is how Srila Gurudev has picked me up from such a suffering situation and how very, very mercifully uh, he's feeding me with his divine love. I remember when I first came in contact with Srila Gurudev that hmm? When I first came in contact, it was in February 96. At that time, my divine Diksha Guru, he had just left the planet, departed for Golok Vrindavan. And some of our God brothers, we went to Navadweep, Sri Navadweep Dam, and it was at the beginning of the Navadweep Parikrama, and Srila Gurudev was there with many of his um, sannyasi God brothers. And as we were sitting in the back of the room and just coming and taking the darshan of Srila Gurudev, immediately my heart went to Srila Gurudev. I became automatically, spontaneously, totally attracted. I was completely bewildered because such spontaneous mood, this is not in my nature. I'm a very dry person. <laughs> so I just kept it within. And my God brothers, when we walked away, they were saying, Hey, Govinda, what's wrong with you? What's wrong with you? And I was just keep it within. No, I'm okay. No problem. And then after some time, then they started to say, Oh, oh, oh. Govinda, he's going to jump camp. He's going to jump camp. <laughs> I started being described as a prostitute. <laughs> So then, I, was, I went back to England, and there I resumed my duties as temple president. And then a few months later, then Srila Gurudev came on his first world tour. And he was in Amsterdam, and one of my god brothers, he arranged that Srila Gurudev would come to the temple. Ragnar Bhattapu. Actually, I owe him so much. At that time, I thought, oh, you're giving me big headache, big headache. <laughs> so, <laughs> all my, all, all the devotees in our temple, when they heard that, oh, Shilnarayan Maharaj is coming to England, then all were running, yes, we must go and take Dasha, we must go, we must go, because they were all radical. They had one understanding, that under any condition, that where there's bona fide sadhu, then you have to break all barriers to go and get Sadhu Sangha. This was the mercy of the teachings of my Diksu Guru Nitya Lila Pavishnam Vishnupad, Srila Gorgavinda Swami. But I was temple president. I had responsibility. And I could not go. I said, oh, what am I going to do? I became so much anxiety that I had a fever. I developed a fever. And I was just laying there in the corridor sick. And then the regional secretary rang me up. 
And I said, oh, Govinda, you're not inviting Narayan Mars to the temple, are you? I said, no, what made you think something like that? <laughs> I would never do a thing like that. <laughs> then I said, but look, he's coming. We should go and we should see what he's all about on behalf of Iskand. We should go and really check this out. Make sure everything is above board, blah, blah, blah. He said, yes, you're right, we should go. <laughs> so then, Srila Gurudev, the day before he was coming, then my regional secretary, he rang me. He said, Govinda, I can't go. I said, what? Oh, actually, when, he's, when we made the arrangement, we're gonna go. Immediately, spontaneously, my fever was gone. Yeah. I started jumping. Yes, I'm going to get Sadhu Sangha. I'm going to get Sadhu Sangha. Of course, Sadhu Sangha is not so cheap. Yeah. Huh? Not just seeing the external form of Sadhu, but really surrendering to Sadhu. But then, afterwards, he rang me one day before. He said, Govinda, I can't go. I said, why? He said, my wife said, I can't go. That if I go out, I'll, I'll be pulled in by <laughs> He said, but you, you go. I said, on behalf of this gun. He said, yes, you go. <laughs> so then, I went, and I remember I was hearing Srila Gurudev speak in one very small, um, room. Now, so many devotees are coming. But then, in Sri Dham, it, it was like um, a flop house. Uh, just a small place. Few people crunched in. And I went, and then just hearing words from Srila Gurudev. Then when I went back to my Sankirtan van, where I was staying, I was just crying and crying and crying. For the first time after so many months, then I started to feel some separation from my divine spiritual master, Srila Gorga Swami, by the mercy of Srila Gurudev. By His mercy, just come in contact with Him, then He imbued in me some mood of affection for my spiritual master. So, I won't go on because time is short. But, I remember then following Travel with Shula Gurudev. And then finally, Shula Gurudev would always say that, yes, I want to give you sannyas. And I would think, no, 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 not me. <laughs> you may give so many people, but not me. Then, finally, Shula Gurudev, he called me in one Navdi Parikrama. And he called me in to say, okay, so I want to give you sannyas. And then I thought, look, I have to reveal my heart to my spiritual master. Then I, I just opened my mouth and I was going to just reveal just how lusty and how low I was. And there was at that time a room, room full of ladies just walked in. But I thought, no problem, I must reveal my mind to my spiritual master. And then Gurudev just looked at me and said, okay, okay, no problem. <laughs> he says, your quality is your honesty. You are qualified. You take Sanya. that when the sannyā ceremony took place, we received the mantras, and then the sannyā ceremony, the most miraculous thing happened. Most miraculous thing happened. That I am a person very lusty. Very lusty, I, honestly, I tell you. But by mercy of Srila Gurudev, lust is going. Yes. Huh? <laughs> but at the time of receiving sannyas, all my material desires, they just vanished. They were gone. And I was looking, wait, where are they? What's going on? <laughs> and it lasted, <laughs> it lasted for months. I was, I was, I was like walking, I, I said, no, 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 no. And then at that time, though I have not seen, uh, really, the form of Srila Gurudev, but at that time, then I experienced what is the potency of Srila Gurudev. So, I'm just praying that I not be a hypocrite or a duplicitous person because Srila Gurudev, not only is he giving me so much mercy, but he's giving, showering all of us with so much mercy. Today is his divine Vyasa Puja Day. And today, 
Devotees were coming, lining up, and offering so many presents, offering um, foodstuffs. But actually we see that on Vyasa Puja Day, that Krishna is so merciful that he makes this arrangement that through his pure devotee, that he comes and he showers us with presents. And what are those presents? The blessings from Sri Goloka Vrindavan. That there's no, we're, give, we're apparently giving presents, but no. This is an arrangement of the Lord uh, to give us the most priceless things. So for that, I'm just praying that I can take this with some kind of open heart and render some service to Srila Gurudev. <laughs> Shriman Bhakti Vedanta, Shrauti Maharaj, two words. All, all are speaking very good, very good. I am very happy. Om Jnana Timiram Dasya, Jnana Jnana Sharakaya, Chaksur Miritam Yena, Tasmae Shri Gurave, Pancha Karpatarubhyasya Kripa Sindhu Vyayevacha Patitana Pavamevyo Vaishnavevyo Namo Namo First of all I would like to offer my millions of Dandavat Pranams to the lotus feet of my Shiksha and Sanyas Guru Shura Bhakti Vedanta Narayan Goswami Maharaj and the same in the lotus feet of my Diksha Guru, Shila Gaur Govinda Swami. So today on this occasion, Gurudev has asked me to speak exceptionally. So after hearing uh, Activedanta Shamaraj, I also remind, reminds me a lot of very nice uh, relates stories with Srila Gurudev. But one thing I would like to say before is that once there, there was a, some confusions with Gaur Govinda Maharaj about his relationship with Gurudev, some people, some devotees thought that Gaur Govinda Maharaj may not allow us to go to Srila Gurudev. So, Actually, Shura Gorgovina Maharaj, once, he was asked, why don't you go and preach to Vrindavan, in Vrindavan? So he said, I am not going to preach in Vrindavan, because in Vrindavan, Shura Narayan Maharaj is there. I am here, Bhakti Pramod Puri Maharaj is in, my, in Puri, Navadvip, and I am in Puri and Srila Bhaktivedanta Narayana Maharaj is in Vrindavan. So I wanted to clarify because this is very important. So, Gurudev, in many occasions, maybe thousands of times, he saved my life. At every moment, actually, he saving my life. Even this morning, he was doing it. <laughs> so I remember many occasions when I see the devotions of all his associates. I was traveling with him in many occasions in the beginnings. And I was thinking, oh, they are all serving Gurudev so very nicely. And here I am not doing anything. How possible? And I was feeling very, very depressed. So, one time in Hawaii, in Oahu, in Vrindavan's place, just a little <laughs> funny story. We were coming back from taking a bath, and I told Gurudev, oh Gurudev, I am not serving you. So, how can I live with this? He said, no, you are serving me. I said, how? He said, look, you know, to go to Vrindavan's house, there is a few steps huh? from the beach to the house. 
So he said, took my chada and he put it around my neck and under my arms. And he said, now you should pull me up the stairs. <laughs> so really I did pull Guru there through the stairs and he was not playing. It was really, <laughs> I had to do it. Then when we got there, he told me, you see, how you beautifully surf me. <laughs> <laughs> and also, Queen <laughs> Dawan is laughing. <laughs> also, in Australia, I don't know if I can say all these things, because actually we should say Guru Tadva. <laughs> because if you speak about your relationship with Guru Dawan, it is your own glorification. <laughs> but it is nice. <laughs> also in Australia, before that period also, I was feeling everybody here has a relationship with Gurudev and I am the only one who doesn't have it. So I went to see Gurudev in the Kutir there at Krishnavarava's place and I said to Gurudev, Gurudev, I don't have a relationship with you. So he said, come on, sit next to me. So I sat next to him and he extended his right leg and he put it on my shoulder, left shoulder. Then he put his left leg on my right shoulder and then with his feet behind my head, like this, he went like this, turning. He said, and then he looked at me and said, you see, how beautiful we have a relationship. <laughs> oh. So, in another occasion. In another occasion in Mathura Gudiyamat, I was just coming and I, I had spoken to one devotee that I had to do some martial arts in my previous life. So he said, to, maybe Guru have heard about it. And he said, oh, you should be my bodyguard. So I said, Guru Dev, yes, but what will be my service? Because <laughs> bodyguards means you do nothing. <laughs> you just hang around and Gurudev is protecting you. <laughs> There's not much to do. So I said, what should be my service? He said, oh, you should chant and read. I said, oh, but my brain is not like yours. I cannot chant and read so much. He said, oh, no problem. I will kick out your brain and I will put my brain in your brain. He looked at me and he said, oh, you are so big, so strong, but inside there is nothing. <laughs> but look, I am so skinny, so skinny, but inside I have atom bombs. <laughs> Nausiman Bhaktivedant Madhava Maharaj to speak. Om Nagyana Timirandhasa Gyananjana Salakaya Jaksurun Militanina 
Prasmai Sri Gurave Namaha Avatirna Sakarna Sri Bhamana Narayana Rupanuga Prabharauda Sri Kesava Priya Bhaje Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare So very auspicious day everybody is speaking so nice so I have not so much realization and nothing how I can speak <laughs> I am thinking how I can get rid from this time. <laughs> but finally Gurudev dragged me and forced me to speak. <laughs> so, we have to discuss about Guru Tattva, which I have heard from Srila Gurudev's Lotus League. I shall try at my level best to speak something. So, Guru means, Gu means darkness, Ru means light. So we are all conditioned soul in darkness. What is this darkness? We have heard yesterday from Sripad Bhaktivedanta Asam Maharaj. He explained very nicely from Bhajan Rahasya. The Sarubhram, Asatrishna, Hidai Darugalla, Aparad. All these four types of art, four, four, four into four, six, sixteen types. And moreover, we have heard from Vishnacha Kuru Thakur's Madhurija Kadambini, Utsamui, Ghanatarala, Burovikalpa, Vishay Sangara, Niyamakchama, Tarangarungini. After that, Guru Dev told yesterday, Loy, Big Chep, Apratipati, Kosai, Rasasad. Moreover, they are Ekdas Bhartini, Bhagadas Bhartini. Praiki Purnatan Tiki. All are darkness. And what light Guru Dev is giving us? He makes us understand. You are in this darkness. You don't know what is light. Guru Dev makes us understand. Our constitutional form is eternal servant of Krishna. We have heard this. But we have no realization. Only by serving Guru Dev intimacy. Like a soulmate then you can realize that we are servant of Krishna. What kind of servant? They are serving so many ways, so many devotees, like as a servant, the servitor mood, or as a friendship, or paternal mood, or paramour mood. So, only by mercy of Gurudev, we can understand what is relation with us, or with myself, and between Krishna. So Guru Dev giving this light and Guru Dev giving more light that we describe in Sila Bhakti Mahal Thakur in Jaiva Dharma and prior to that other acharyas that what is our particular service like Sila Bhakti Mahal Thakur has told that Barane Tarit Bastara Bali Kamala Manjari Nam Sare Bara Vatsar Vaisa Satata Sananda Sukhada Dham Karpur Seva Lalitar Gaon Radha Jitheshwari Han Mameshwari Naak Sinanda Nanda Naar Pramod Han By mercy of Guru Dev we can realize for ourselves also in one day. This light is Guru Dev giving in final stage. So this light is Guru Dev giving us so Gu means darkness, Ru means light. Gu is giving this thing. Unless and we will not serve Guru Dev, surrender Guru Dev completely and we will not serve him with intimacy. Like Sipad Gopavinda Palpru told, Vishrambhena Guru Seva. B means Vigata, Sambha means Sankoj Bhav. Have to give up Sankoj mood. Then, he is so high, I am so low. Not like this. But no, it will not artificially. Only will come by service. Like Krishna's friends are telling to Krishna, Tumi kon bada lok, tumi ami sam. If Krishna tell all, do this, do that, oh. I defeat you, I have to ride on your shoulder. And later on, when Siddham defeat or other, they want to also ride on Krishna's shoulder. So no, I could not carry Krishna. Tell, well, what, how rich person you are? You are myself equal. 
So Gurudev gave this light. So have to serve Gurudev with intimacy, then all this light will come. So Guru, the, the darkness will go, Gurudev give light and darkness will go automatically. So Guru Tattva. And each have heard from Sipat Padvana Maharaj and others that Tasmat Guru Prabhupada Jiggasu Sri Uttamam Sabde Paricha Nisnatam Brahmanupa Samasriyam. So who is Sadguru? So Srimad Bhagavat has told you three symptoms. One internal and two external. External symptoms are Sabta Brahmani Nisnata. He must be very expert in all scriptures. If devotee or disciple has any doubt, he can rule out immediate cutting from Shastras. Oh no, I shall tell you tomorrow or I shall send you email, not like this. Cutting from Shastra immediate remove is doubt. So Sabda Brahmani Nisnata. Or Para Brahmani Nisnata. He must be a realized soul. Like Sankranadi told, he is serving divine couple, leaning towards Simhati Radhika 24 hours a day. Another symptom, Brahmani Upasamastayam must be detached from material thing, material desire. So, I am quoting again Sankranadi this word, the Sadguru is serving divine couple, leading towards Simhati Radhika 24 hours a day. Not only this, there's something more inside that. What is that? I think almost all your initiated devotee in Guru Mantra is explained. Guru Devaya Vidmahe Krishna Nandaya Dhimahi. What he is doing is mentioned in this mantra clearly. Like the Rupa Sahipad, as an associate of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Salvin Mahaprabhu, as a Rupa Goswami, and as a associate of divine couple, as a Rupa Manjari, serving divine couple in Golok Vrindavan and in Mahaprabhu Nishatadip, Navadip. Same time serving. So what Gurudev is doing? Krishna Nandaya Dhimahi, being giving Krishna Ananda, meaning pleasure to Krishna. Who Krishna? Krishna means Krishna Chaitanya. Means Gurudev serving Krishna Chaitanya. And moreover, Krishna plus Anandaya, he is serving Krishna Chandra, Samsundar, Radha Kanta. Moreover, Krishna plus Anandaya, he is serving Krishna means Simhati Radhika. He is serving three personalities at a time, not only one person, three personalities at a time. So if someone will come in Gaudiya Sampradaya, under guidance of Bonafide Gurudev, when they get perfection, their Atma will manifest in two ways. One will go to Satyadip Navadip, another will go to Golok Vrindavan. Same time is realize or enjoy Udaryaras in Navadip Dham, and same time will realize Madhurjaras in Golok Vrindavan. So, what is Udarja and what is Madhurja? I will give you a little clarification about this. So, Sila Vishwanath Chakwad Chakur has explained in Madhurija Kadamini that when someone got perfection, then Krishna will give him darshan. It's so, so beautiful. Seeing Krishna's beauty, devotee became faint. Isn't that wrong? Why I take so much beauty? My devotee could not tolerate, he became faint. Then Krishna came, oh, oh my dear devotee, please oak up, please oak up. Hearing Krishna's sweet voice, devotee woke up again, opened his eyes. First he saw Krishna's saundarja madhurja, now saurasya madhurja. After that, what happened? Again he saw Krishna and became faint. Oh. Why am I at so much madhurja, if sweetness, if my devotee could not enjoy this, could not release this? Then he touched devotee, he is by soft. Finger, I mean it's called Saukumarja, Saukumarja Madhurja. Getting Krishna's sweet, soft touch, he woke up again. Again became faint. Then Krishna put his bodily fragrant 
in his nostril. Again he woke up, again became fat. So in Krishna's Leela, devotees seeing Krishna, Krishna one after another, Madhurya became fat. But Mahaprabhu is so merciful. What is giving? He giving the capacity to devotee that he can see all the Madhuryas of Krishna at a time. You never repent. It's called Oudarja. So Mahaprabhu is Oudarja Mahi Vigraha. So who wants to have Guru Devi intimacy? He can realize these two things, Oudarja and Madhurya same time and can serve Sri Jantana Mahaprabhu and Divine Kapil under Guru Dev guidance. So I'm giving one something that's how everybody tell about Guru Dev. If I not tell anything, then everybody will think, oh, how we are serving Guru Dev. So Master, I have to tell something. So, once Guru Dev got operation in 86, 83 prostate gland in Calcutta. After operation next day, the whole team of the nursing home came to visit Guru Dev morning before the round. Then I asked them that as before we had been three, four days here, only sometime one doctor used to visit, why all of you come today? Then they told that during operation, we had eight are in a team in operation theatre room. When operation was going on through TUR system, all of a sudden he chant Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Ram Hare Hare. Then we became surprised. Oh, how sense comes so quick? Then how will can operate him? That anesthesiologist doctor, he saw another, no, no sense, no sense at all. A person going on, Guru Dev constantly chanting Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. So then doctor give their one full floor to us for cooking Guru Dev to everything who will come can stay. Free of cost. And that operation, little defect, again Guru Dev got operation of postal gland 86 in Jaipur. Same thing happened. A person going on in unconscious condition, chanting Harinam. So now you can understand who Guru Dev is. is not like an ordinary soul like ourselves. Even being unconscious, a person going on, he is chanting Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. And when we sleep, we see so many nonsense dream. And what Guru Dev is doing? Became being unconscious, he is chanting holy name. That means he is serving his master and mistress, prior, prior to his mistress, and serving divine couple. So this is the sign that sometimes we are told, being with us, he is serving divine couple 24 hours a day. This is the example. Hare Krishna. Vidnath Prabhu, two words. Ramdasya Gyananjana Slakaya Chaksur Omiritam Yena Tasmai Sri Guru Ved Maha Vansha Kalpatrupya Shakripa Sindhu Edvacha Patita Nam Pavanetya Vaishna Vedya Namana Maha Please excuse me, I'm a little emotional. <laughs> <coughs> So, on this auspicious day, we are all very happy that we are in the presence of our Guru Dev, yeah, observing this most wonderful transcendental festival of the appearance of Sri Guru in this world. This is an extraordinary manifestation. We all have some faith that God exists. All of us who are assembled here. We also have faith in hearing about 
who is God. And we also have heard from our speakers, previous speakers, and we have read many times how we are all part and parcel of God. Jivatma, manifestation of Jiva Sakti, the Tatashta, Jiva, from the marginal energy of Krishna, is a small part and parcel of Krishna. He has the same qualities as Krishna, but in very minute quantity. So we can make a comparison that a person who is in this audience, who is wealthy, he may feel some concern to help others. Yeah. We have some tendency, someone who is strong, he will have some tendency, some interest to protect others, those who are weaker. Those who are intelligent, who have some qualification, yeah. who are learned, who are doctor, or anyhow, a professional person, they have some tendency, some attack, attraction to help others who are in need. This is one of the qualities which is inherent in all jivas, the quality of compassion or mercy. So, we can just imagine, having faith in God, that that quality, that very quality, is there in God also. How can we detect that? How can we experience that? Only when we come in contact with Sri Guru, then we can see how merciful is God. How kind He is that He has sent that very personality to this world where we are looking how to be happy, enjoying our senses. Krishna is so kind, he sent that very personality to tell us, what are you doing? Don't you know that happiness is not to be found? Yes, we all know that. We all struggle and suffer and become completely frustrated with all the unlimited experiences we have with sense enjoyment. And here that very personality comes and says, please come along with me. Be happy forever. Yeah. How kind is Krishna? Yeah. We can only realize that if we accept Sri Guru in our hearts. Yeah. Then we will see how Krishna manifests in the form of Sri Guru. <coughs> and gradually, as Guru Dev is helping us, yeah, inch by inch, to go and make progress in our bhakti, yeah, we become more and more hopeful and our faith develops. We want to surrender more to Sri Guru. <coughs> So this is one of the wonderful aspects of Sri Guru. We've also heard from our senior sannyasi speakers, and especially Shimati Shyamarani, all the glories of Sri Guru. Sometimes we think, oh, I'm only a lady. I don't know how to become qualified in spiritual life. But I think tonight all of you have heard after Shamarani did speaking how it is also possible for anyone to glorify Sri Guru and to be successful and happy always in Krishna consciousness. So a little bit, I wanted to touch this. I was actually praying in my heart that Gurudev would allow me to speak a few words. But um, I didn't think that after all the sannyasis he would still allow some remnant for me. So I wanted to touch one more point. 
in this relationship. The qualification of Sri Guru, we have heard tonight. I wanted to say something about the qualification of the disciple. How can we recognize who is our Gurudev? We all want to have nice relationships in our life. And we gather some people around us who we think will give us some happiness. Some of us are married, we have children, we have friends, we have societies, and we all feel comfortable to a relative degree in that association. But really, the only happiness yeah, is possible when we are in that association which can provide the need of our Atma, yeah. the need of our inner self, the need of our soul, and that is relationship with Guru. And all of us here, and everyone in the world who has a relationship with Srila Gurudev, is very, very fortunate. There are many Gurus, but there is only one Gurudev. Srila Bhakti Vrata Narayan Goswami Maharaj They warned me, many devotees, before I came to Gurudev, don't go to him. I said, why? He said, he will take everything from you. Yeah? He will take your heart, your money, everything. Nothing he will leave. <laughs> then I thought, well, that's the best thing I can meet in my life. Yeah? Someone who can take my heart. Moreover, they were warning me that if you come near to him, you will find out that he is sweeter than the sweetest. Yeah? He is kinder than the most kindest person you've ever known. Yeah. This is a proof that God exists. Yeah. Because his pure representative is so kind, so merciful. <coughs> so the qualification of the disciple, Srila yeah. Bhakti Vedanta Swami Maharaj Srila Prabhupada, he made it in a hidden way or in a those who wanted to see it, they could discover it. What is the qualification of the disciple? Krishna Bhakti Rasa Bhavatir Matir Kriyatam Yati Kutopi Lapyate Tatra Loliam Api Mulyam Ekalam Janma Koti Sukritir Nalapyate This is real Krishna consciousness. Srila Bhakti Vedanta Swami Prabhupada says this in Chaitanya Charitamrita. This is the definition of Krishna consciousness. If we have so much eagerness in our heart that we only want yeah, to receive that very relationship, that very happiness, transcendental happiness, which is there in the hearts of the eternal associates of Shri Radha and Krishna and Vrindavan, of the eternal associates of Sri Titanya Mahaprabhu in Sri Namadvip Dham. Only by having that desire to develop this greed, this interest, this love, yeah, our Krishna consciousness will be successful. And how to obtain that desire? Gurudev says many times, you may have so many anarthas, no problem. Yeah. Just like if you see a beautiful lady, those of us who are in male bodies, suppose you may remember or not, but there was once a very beautiful princess. Her name was Diana. Yeah. So to have a desire to be married to such a beautiful lady, nobody can stop that. Isn't it? You may have that desire within your heart. You may not have any money or other qualification, but the desire, nobody can stop that. Similarly with Krishna. If we have a desire to have a loving relationship with Krishna in the mood of his eternal associates, particularly in the mood of the maid servants of Srimati Radhika, nobody can stop that. There may be so much 16 types of anattas we heard yesterday. There are many, many more to discuss. Yeah. <laughs> they may all be there in your heart, but if there is that desire, then that is qualification for Krishna consciousness. Then 
Only what we have to do is to be always in that association of Sri Guru who can give us the transcendental nourishment which is necessary to develop that desire, to make it thicker and thicker and thicker. And by the desire becoming thicker and thicker, pop, 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 all the anarthas, they have no more, there is no more place for them in our heart. Like Sripad Ashramaras was telling, after he received Sanya's mantras, he couldn't even think anymore. He was wondering, where have they all gone? Yeah. So similarly, by being in, in the association of Sri Guru and having that desire, to hear more and more the Harikata, the powerful Harikata emanating from his lotus lips. Yeah. Even in ordinary relationships, yeah. everything which comes from Gurudev, even the atoms emanating from his transcendental body, they purify us and they kick out all the material desires. Therefore it is most essential to have Sadhu Sangha. At any cost we should have Sadhu Sangha. No matter what it costs, beg, borrow, or steal. <laughs> Try to have Sadhu Sangha yeah, in your life, and you see your life will be successful. So I wanted to share, since uh, they are so qualified, Pujipat Shoti Maharaj and Pujipat Madhav Maharaj, and also Pujipat Asha Maharaj, they have told so many wonderful things. I wanted to share. <laughs> Also, of you, at least one, yeah, beautiful thing with all of you, yeah. There are many, many, because some of you know I have been traveling, having the great fortune to be with Srila Gurudev traveling always, last 10 years, almost every moment of the day. <laughs> this is another sign of his cosmic mercy to pick up someone like me and offer his association. Gurudev said the first thing when I came to him and asked him for accepting me as a student to help me understand what is pure bhakti. Gurudev said, I want that you should be with me always. He said, any excuse you should find, be with me. So I never forget that <laughs> instruction. <laughs> But then I was thinking, what to do? I can be with Srila Gurudev, but if I cannot make him happy, yeah, I'm not a joker or anything, uh, that Gurudev is laughing all the time when he sees me. Yeah. I'm not a cook, I cannot sing, I don't know many shlokas, I cannot speak. I can do some organization, and, but even that, I thought Gurudev is so happy here, in Vrindavan, Mathura, always surrounded by so many happy devotees and they are serving him day and night. I thought I cannot take away any of their services, that is not proper. I should look for a service which others are not doing. Yeah? For something which is available but nobody is perhaps doing that. So mercifully Krishna inspired me in the heart to anyhow organize some programs to travel around the world and meet so many wonderful devotees like who are assembled here today who are so dedicated and sincere in offering their service to Srila Gurudev by going around the world again and again we are seeing the real mission of Srila Gurudev. What is he doing? He's collecting flowers everywhere. Beautiful flowers.